Welcome, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> the world's coolest filmmaker, everybody. <laughs> questions and I want to start. Um, there's no better writer than you when it comes to uh, childhood, memories, teenage years, adolescence, all that stuff. You just seem to have an access to it uh, that many of us are desperate to try and get. You just kind of get it right. It's kind of amazing the way you do it. Um, does it, is it easy?
right. and how that plays out in your life. Well, that 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 comes from from the script, from the structure of the script, I suppose, and that kind of. Uh, well, I suppose it's bookended to a certain extent, but it's a pretty large back bookend. But we're kind of starting out, and then so the, that structure obviously came in the script. That the sort of that amazing balancing act between the two, the real event and, and, and his journey there as well. I thought, you know, in animation that would be even more wonderfully blurry. Yeah. You know, to me, it's memory, fantasy, history, cultural history. You know how cultural history really becomes our memories of films we watch, like of the Vietnam War. You know, it's not a few people experienced it by now. You know, but we all experienced it on TV, so it really kind of seen the, uh, the media. So part of you know the book, we have a whole different book. TV, you know, there was so much TV in the movie, but again, that was pretty realistic to me. Just sitting around watching TV, so. There was more, I cut out a lot. <laughs> I had like a whole section of Saturday morning cartoons, I had Houston wrestling, I had all kinds of fun stuff. But it is fun, we have a little animation. It's really fun to animate animation, you know, mm -hmm. and to like animate, uh, Pretty iconic imagery, Sound of Music 2001, to, yeah. to like reimagine those things. Yeah. But I think that's kind of what we're doing in our minds, anyways. We remember things, we're kind of doing these constructs. So if you think of 2001 now, you're, you're having to kind of remember something, which is kind of reanimating in your mind. So I thought, oh, that's a nice place for the film to exist. I kind of want to blow everybody's minds in, in that regard. Right, right. Um, yeah, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, this is such a great structure and an excuse to get a story on the road for all these amazing memories that you have and your ability to do that. Um, so, obviously, you have access to the memories of your childhood and your family, you're growing up with the Cheetos, with, or the Fritos with the, you know, uh, chili and that kind of, those sorts of details. Um, but how, how much did you have to go to the well of research in terms of because the funny thing is it actually fulfills itself as, um, uh, I guess, science fiction film in a way. You know, all that NASA stuff seems so genuinely authentic. You know, it is. There's not a line from NASA that wasn't original. We got into all the transcripts, all the transmissions, every image. You know, NASA is very generous. They're, they're by far my favorite government agency. Footage and make films, they don't care, it's public domain, you pay for it, you're a taxpayer, they're great. <laughs> and uh, you don't have to pay for the footage, it's really great. But uh, yeah, all that is, you might recognize a lot of that footage, you know, we just animated uh, a lot of it, so, but yeah, just all, all that. But yeah, you did several years of deep uh, research for that and all the TV stuff. Kind of like I remembered all that. Like I said earlier, I remember the the kid perspective, but the more adult, rational thing we were doing required a lot of right research. Yeah. Where, where, where were you when it happened? On the couch? Yeah, and I, I, true to form, I think I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I saw it. Uh, in my eyelids, I was there. But no, we had gone extra world that day. It was a tough end. I was just really tired by evening. It was late, and no, I remember it really well. <laughs> Do you remember it's funny. you were telling? I was one. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, um, 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 where should I go next? Um, uh, so, just explain for everybody, and me again, even though I know this, it's still kind of surprising to me every time, um, the, the process that you go through. Because there are credits that we see here that we don't wouldn't normally see in an animated film. I think it's how it results in such a great performances, such sort of em emotional performances that you might not normally get in an animated film. So I suppose I'm going yeah. back to casting and, and, the, and, the, yeah. and the basic simple steps to how it's just be. like any other film. You know, you cast, you, I rehearse a lot, and, you know, we form this family. We, we shot it in 20 days on a, in a green screen environment, which was kind of um, a little mind numbing after about three days. <laughs> you're just like, oh, we're here. You know, most locations you use every day you're at a new location or maybe a week. Something I like cannot that. see you on a green screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? A Marvel movie or something? <laughs> every shot in the movie is, is a special effect, you know, with the little round 
mirror ball kind of thing. Like, oh gosh, and we were pre visiting it on the um, slide. But the, the cool thing is, it was all like make believe. You didn't really, I mean, like we're at a drive in or something. Right. And we're not at a drive in, <laughs> we're on a green screen, but we already have it all. Like, here were the cars, and we could look on the screen and say, you know, you map it all out on the floor. And even the hallways in the house, it's okay, that's, oh, you just walked into the wall, you gotta oh, walk. So there, is a, yeah. there isn't even a, a hallway. No. <laughs> there, is there a station wagon? We had to have a station okay. wagon. Okay. Anything <laughs> they're interacting with is real. Any prop, any car, yeah, that kind of stuff's real. So but you can shoot pretty efficiently. You know, it's a 20 day shoot. So, uh, and it's fun. It's kind of, like I said, make believe, but you can shoot. A lot of takes, whatever you got, you got to do. The kids have a lot of fun with that. But then, um, then you you edit it like a regular movie, except what you're looking at is a green screen with performances, and then as the animation starts showing up, you know, we start dropping in backgrounds. And, right. And um, but we really don't start animating until we lock picture. And by that point, I have all the voice, all Jack's voiceover, and all the. Um, Music, right, thing, yeah. right. So, going to that, so you're talking about a section that you cut out. So you're judging off of the green screen or a little bit of background, yeah. the, the, the overall movement of the story. Right. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. It's kind of tough. You, you're, the movie's a little longer, but it, it looks crappy. You know, it's just you have to imagine what it's going to be. We might have a still up or some really bad looking home movie. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the textures we were going for were like home movies. And, right. Uh, so then, a, lot then of archi- a lot of bad archival stuff that we could kind of clean up and make, right. make vibrant in animation, so. But then where do you, um, so but then when stuff starts to come back to you, you're used to a performance of a real person's face, which I imagine you must become very attached to at a certain point. Yeah. When does that, how does the interaction happen between the two of you and, and, and this team that you have where something is either lost in translation, or how do you navigate the waters of, of you know, bringing the performance to life? Well, you know, I've got, you know, I, I couldn't wait for them to be animated. You know, they, they, you, know, you, just, you just know that's what they're going for. And we've done a lot of, uh, you spend time during the design, so you kind of know what you're going for, what each character, and we're trying to do as much, much as we can with as little as, as possible. In a, in a way, so with that, how many was in? Like a year and whatever. We just yeah, it's just a little over. during the pandemic, we were just on the oh really on the computer every day, just you know. And at that point, I'm just going yes, no. That baseball wouldn't bounce that way, you know. I'm just kind of <laughs> orchestrating like and explaining to a lot of people in Amsterdam like little league baseball. <laughs> 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 I have no idea. No, I have no idea what a lot of this stuff is. And then I'm the old guy in the room. I'm trying to explain. No, this is you know like everybody's the generation. No, Where do we find? What yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. So I'm trying to obsessively get every detail right. Right. And it's, it's, but it's it's really it was fun and it was a fun film to be working on during a miserable time in our in our lives you know, during the whole pandemic. So we were very lucky. We wrapped the live action shoot about three days before the whole thing shut down. We had, you know, think of, if you remember, we had six weeks of prep. You didn't see a movie that seems so elaborate. But I told my production designer, Bruce Curtis, I said, good news, bad news. Bad, bad news is we started shooting in six weeks. And we're just, you know, starting now. Mm-hmm. Like, we could be crazy for a real movie. I said, the good news is we don't have to really build anything. We just have to design it all. Right. So we just needed it to be work, but thank God we, we, we were getting kicked out of our green screen at a certain date, so we got back in. And I said, it, it was great. Netflix said yes, and we went. And we were very fortunate. I, don't think so. I, I think you put your question about the performance, and Rick, I think that you know because it's based on live action performance, you have to honor that. And the whole goal is if you don't capture that and elevate it in some way, then why would you have it at all? So really the, the time and the effort was really put into that character animation and, and really like 80% of it's right here. You know, it's all in the eyes. I, I one of the moments I noticed most was um, the, the, just 
not just that his eyes were red coming out of the pool, it was the exact right red, you know, like growing up at that time, it was like, it made my eyes sting. And that kind of clued me into just how hard that kind of thing might be to get right. That's the kind of thing that you could get hung up on forever trying to get right, but. Yeah, like every part of that's funny. Like I go back to the shooting of it. We just had a and like, come up like the come out of the pool and your eyes are singing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I never experienced that in life, you know? Wow, well, I thought about this would be completely differently. I, I kind of imagined you out of the pool and shooting it and having to erase stuff and then just sort of, I, I guess. I thought we were going to do stuff, but like at the end of the day, we didn't get right. What, we couldn't shoot the pool and they wouldn't have us or we're like, screw it, we'll just do it all. Even when he's getting pulled from the undertow, yeah. we had him on a little <laughs> pulley and we had a shirt in the back with rollers on it, little oh, like stunts, you know. Right. It was all fake. You know? <laughs> I mean, because a movie like this, if this had been a real movie, <laughs> if this had been, you know, um, I mean, that's like, what, a hundred million dollar movie? Yeah, I think it's about 80, 80, 80 to 100, which I don't think I would have gotten. <laughs> <I'm not saying laughs> a, family watching, a family sitting around watching TV. Isn't that exciting? Or a trip to the moon. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> 
I wanted to like, you know, switch it up a little bit. But uh, no, you, sometimes you just do a calculation. You go, eh, you know, by the time you're doing it, hey, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that actually. This is, if NASA is your favorite government agency, who's your least favorite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, legal clearances. How is the Walt Disney Club and everything? <laughs> nice that you mentioned that, you know? There's this thing, in, speaking of legal clearance, called uh, fair use. <laughs> That if you're actually talking about something, maybe culturally critiquing it or satirizing it, uh, law says you can kind of use it. So we got on that pretty early. I <laughs> 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 put the you know, Tinker Bell flying off. Can we uh, do that? And then, yeah, we had a good, good lawyer who came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we use 2001? Yeah, since you're talking about it. We didn't have to. I uh, hope there's no copyright holders. <laughs> Descendants of copyright holders. And we got to do that with uh, some songs, too. That little montage where you all the songs that are named after girls yeah. in this class. Uh, we didn't clear most of those. <laughs> but we did clear the Johnny Cash because we used it a little differently. But uh, yeah, it's amazing what you could uh, get away with if you like. I think like <laughs> a whole movie with songs that you're either talking about or <laughs> You could just fill a whole movie. That's fair use. This is my, usually that's just the killer, right? You're Absolutely. making movies like you can't use that, or if you do, it's four million dollars. Right? Yeah. But uh, this was like, felt, felt like a little payback of 30 years of just getting killed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, no, we did pretty well. Well, it, it's, it's what the movie depends on, is all the details, the absolute yeah. commitment to all the details. And once you hear one thing, you have to hear all the rest. And all these memories just keep cascading for any of us alive anywhere near that. So, so, so Tommy, are you do you you're running day to day? Once he's shot, he sits and waits for you to keep coming, feed stuff back. How does the, how does the how does the collaboration? Tommy's work? on the set, you know. We're yeah. he would even come over to me. I'm doing a camera move. Goes, can you do that camera move? That'll cost us about an extra month. Can <laughs> <laughs> you do that? I'm like, oh. <laughs>
I mean, but Planet of the Apes and 2001 were playing at the same time. Yeah. You know, and in, in the everything's pretty exact. You know, like those four films were playing at the drive-in. Right. Yeah, at that night, you know, that Janis Joplin on TV. If you look at your, if you got yeah. a TV guide, that's what's on. That Beverly Hillbillies, that was that day. You know, might as well. And Susan, is it Susan Sontag? Uh, who's who's? Uh, no, Gloria it's Steinem. Uh, Gloria Steinem. Yeah. That's right. Gloria Steinem. Who's the guy? Who's the uh, uh, messenger? Uh, Ira Messenger. Or something. Right. He's another radical kind right. of person. Yeah. But you got to hand it to him. Uh, TV back then, the TV production of that, they had all kinds of. They had great science fiction writers. They had other astronauts. It was quite a production. They invited on these dissident voices, people who, who were against the program. That's what surprised me as an adult, looking, kind of informing myself about it more. It was like, you know, they had uh, Kurt Vonnegut was on. I did. I tried to get him, and I had to cut him. But he's just shitting all over. The, the whole <laughs> <program>. <laughs> you know, I forgot it. I didn't pick this up as an eight-year-old. But hippies and kind of counterculture people thought it was a waste of cash. It was kind of this militaristic, crew-cutted guy thing that felt very nationalistic, and it was, you know, pretty Cold War exercise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not, not to be cynical, but, you know, the optimism, I think everybody had the sci-fi writer mindset that, oh, we were going to be on Mars, and, you know, all that. We didn't figure that someone would quit writing the checks. You know, and that was the government after we kind of won that Cold War exercise. You know, when we landed on the moon, the Russians, we didn't know this, but they were, they were orbiting the moon. They were probably a month or two away from landing on it. So we won that, that skirmish in a big way. And it, that was it. They just didn't, you know, no more. I think it's all coming now, but it sounds like we'll be in the, on the moon again in a couple of years. But uh, you didn't. You don't think it's gonna stop. You know that that would be the high water mark. So it's only as years go by it becomes a bigger achievement. You know this great, you know the greatest human engineering feat. Um, but you know it's fifty some odd years ago. You, know, so you always think it's gonna get better, but you never know it's when it goes away. You know? It's like that championship the team wins. <laughs> oh, we're gonna win next year. And then you don't win for 50 years. So they become, it becomes a bigger deal. <laughs> That's my sports analogy. <laughs> but, uh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, the best writer on the <laughs>